All right, so for this problem, oh, let me get back here. So for this one, if we have a 0, 5 plus 2i, right, what we need to do is remember, automatically, when we know 5 plus 2i, then automatically, Jacob, we know that we have what is also our other 0? 5 minus 2i, right? Automatically. 5 plus 2i, we have the conjugate 5 minus 2i. So then the next thing what we need to look at is, yes, you can use synthetic division for this. Not a problem. Set it up. 5 plus 2i, synthetically divide. Go for it. Give it a shot. See how you do. All right? However, there's another way we can do this. And I like to do this method, especially when we have a binomial and another binomial, is let's multiply these out to get another factor that's not going to include the i, right? Because remember, what happens when we multiplied a, a complex number by its conjugate? We got rid of the i, the I right? So we have 5 plus 2i. Oh, wait, that's not, that's the 0, right? So the factor is going to be x minus 5 plus 2i, right? That's one factor. And then the other factor is going to be x minus 5 minus 2i, correct? So if I was going to multiply these out, again, you can multiply them like this. Or let's do the step that we did again. Let's rewrite this using associative property. Then, we, again, we have difference of two squares. So when I multiply this out, I have x minus 5 squared. And then 2i times a negative 2i is going to be negative 4i squared, which would be plus 4. Right? So then I have x minus 5 squared, which is going to be x squared minus 10x. And then we'll have plus 25, but plus 4 is going to give you what? 29. Plus 29. Okay? Now, we can use this to use long division for this polynomial. Huh? Why would you use long division? Because now I know that this is a zero and that's a zero, right? They both multiply to give me this, correct? Both those zeros are written, written as factors and multiply to give me this polynomial. So think of it like this way. Just think of like if you had two and three, like if I have factors, let's say if I have factors of 12 or two and three, right? Multiply them and give me six. I can still divide 6 into 12 to find all. Remember, we're trying to find all the zeros, oh, okay. right? And remember, since this is to the third power, right, do I have all of my zeros? No. So I still have one more I need to get. So I need to still continue to factor this down. So what I'm going to do is I have x squared minus 10x plus 29, long division, x cubed minus 7x squared minus x plus 87. Okay, so, remember how we had to use long division again, right? x squared goes into x cubed, x times. x times x squared, x cubed. x times negative 10x is going to be a negative 10x squared. Um, x times 29 is going to be 29x, positive 29. So then remember, we subtract the whole row. x cubed minus x cubed, 0 x cubed. Negative x, negative 7 x squared minus negative 10 x squared is a positive 3 x squared. Um, negative x minus negative 29 x is going to give you a negative 30 x. And then that's the rest of my multiplying thing. So then I could have 87 on the bottom. So now I do x squared divided into 3x squared. Yes, it goes in there, positive, three times. Three times x squared is going to give you a, uh, three times x squared gives you 3x squared. Three times negative 10 is a negative, I'm sorry, three times negative 10x is a negative 30x. Three times 29 is going to give you a positive 87. Subtract the rows, everything's equal to zero. So therefore, my last remaining factor is x plus three. So if this is a zero, I know, Jacob, that that's a zero, all right? Then I multiply them, use long division, and I figure out my last factor, proving that that's a zero as well. Cool? Pretty awesome, huh? All right. Not
really so much.